Welcome back. Release the Kraken, a movie line I find appropriate when it comes to the likely political fallout of this impeachment acquittal. Ken Paxton, already a highly favored son of the GOP hard right, now completely exonerated of what he's already referring to as sham charges from so-called rhinos, rhinos sorry, and their collaborators, the evil Democrats. One would guess Paxton, who touts his close ties to Donald Trump and has promoted his upcoming interview with Tucker Carlson, may well have set his sights on bigger jobs with more power, a pursuit that would draw plenty of support from the usual West Texas suspects. Panel, should Greg Abbott and even Dan Patrick be watching their backs? I'm going to ask you that, Chris Tritico. Well, certainly he, um, he's emboldened now, and uh, I, would, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he's looking now at something higher. I, I, wouldn't, I don't see him running against Greg Abbott. Uh, Greg Abbott has got all the money he needs to stay right where he is as long as he wants. Uh, I would suspect if he's going to run for a higher office, it's going to be outside of, outside of um, a state office and run for maybe a uh, representative seat or maybe run against one of the senators who's, go, who's uh, not doing what he thinks he needs to be, that needs to be done. All right, Charles, you agree with that? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that if he, he I, I would say probably Senate or something. Um, but I mean, I think right now he's going to ride on the high of being the, the, you know, Attorney General back in charge. And I'm going to be looking at fundraising numbers the, from here on out because he was a national figure before, but the, the right has now definitely propped him up as even, even even more of a national figure. Obviously, Trump has come out in support. There have been folks from all over the country who've been voicing their support for him. So I'm really curious to see this bounce back after this. All right. Surprise, surprise. Our uh, viewers in the Sunday survey say uh, politicians are abusing the impeachment process. 90% of them saying yes. What do you think of that, Joe Jaworski? Well, you know, it, it looks like that may be the trend uh, now that we have, obviously, Biden under impeachment watch, like a hurricane in the Gulf. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I don't know you could call abusing impeachment three times in over 100 years in Texas, but I guess my question is, what's next? Maybe they'll impeach Paxton again after the feds have something to say. All right, Bill, uh, you and I have spoken, and you said regardless of how this goes, uh, this is indicative of a civil war, so to speak, within the Republican Party? Absolutely. I mean, the, the UT poll that came out right before the Paxton trial started showed his support among Republicans in Texas falling from 81% to 43% in a six-month period. And I hear all these, I see all these Republicans online saying, we've got to get the rhinos out of the party. Well, you know, you get all those rhinos out of the party, there's not going to be a lot of people left in the Republican Party. So a friend of mine texted me last night and said, what do you think? I said, this is the beginning of the Civil War of the Texas Republican Party. Gary Pollan, jump in here. Yeah, well, I fought this battle when I was, became party chairman in 1996. <clears throat> and I ran as the strong conservative candidate. But uh, when I got in, I told the strong conservatives, I'm not move, we're moving people from the party. I agree with 80% of the time. So moderate Republicans, uh, pro-choice Republicans, they have a place in the party I'm running. I took a lot of crap for that. But I was right, and Bill's right. If the party divides between the conservatives and the more conservative conservatives, where I, by the way, I put myself there, but I'm also a realist, and the Democrats actually pull their head out from wherever it's been hidden. <laughs> they, uh, the Republicans are going to be in trouble in Texas. But if we, if they keep nominating, and I say this fairly, Rosemary Garza, alleged communist Democrat, and don't nominate someone like Joe Jaworski, who is a well-respected former mayor of Galveston for Attorney General, they're going to keep losing. All right. Charles Blaine, you're in the middle of this battle all the time. <laughs> True? True? Yes. What's going on here? I mean, are you fearful of a, a deep divide that continues to get deeper? Uh, yeah, I mean, for sure. I mean, we, you know, I, I don't think the party right now knows how to come together. I think that everybody's out for blood and everybody's going to be out for blood. I agree with Bill, though. No matter which way this went, that was going to happen. I think this way, uh, I don't know if it makes it a little bit better because the, the folks who would have been more angry and more funded are now less angry because they, they you know, are still in power. But I, I, I do think that this is going to further div the, the divide. I don't think it gives Democrats an edge. I mean, I think they're still kind of, you know, far beyond winning statewide office here. But I do think it puts us in a vulnerable position moving forward. All right, Chris Tritico, yes or no question, and then you can respond. <laughs> uh, the Senate and Dan Patrick had the uh, choice of uh, sticking up for justice or sticking it to the House, and that's what they chose. Well, absolutely, they chose to stick it to the House and, and play politics on this, and that's the problem with 
with these types of, uh, of, of procedures is, is like I've been saying all along, politics rules the end of the day here. And um, I don't think that, uh, it, that we can say that Texas impeachment process has been abused, but it has been nationally, and this was an abuse in this one. All right, we're going to leave it there. Strike